I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, I'm going to show you how to use OpenTX to send RSSI, that is signal strength information, to your flight controller so that you can have an RSSI readout in your on-screen display, even if your receiver doesn't support RSSI output natively. Stay tuned. If you have a receiver like the FreeSky X4R SB, then you know it has an RSSI output pad. And you can connect a wire from that RSSI output pad to an RSSI input on your flight controller, and the receiver will send signal strength information to the flight controller so you can know when you're about to fly out of range when or if you've got any kind of hard, like your antenna is damaged and your signal strength isn't strong enough. This is a super cool feature. You know, we're all supposed to do a range check before we fly. Every time before you fly, you're supposed to do a range check. But most of us don't. We just plug the battery in and we go fly. So having RSSI readout is useful, not just because it tells you when you're about to fly out of range, but also because it can tell you before you even take off that you've got a problem. But most of us probably aren't flying with RSSI because many receivers don't support RSSI output and many flight controllers don't have an RSSI input. What I'm about to show you today is the workaround for all of that. But there's a catch. It only works if you're using OpenTX. So all you guys out there with other, other I mean, I don't know, maybe somebody else does it. I don't think so. But I'm going to show you the OpenTX solution. Let's get into it. So here I am in OpenTX with a fresh new model that I've created. And the reason I'm starting with a fresh new model is because there's something you need to do before any of this will work. And most of you will already have done it by this point, but just in case, I'm going to show you what it is. I'm going to go here and I'm going to bind the receiver to the Tyrannus, which I, again, you probably already did this, but bear with me. So I'm going to press menu and then page, 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 page to get to the telemetry screen. And I'm going to go down and highlight discover new sensors and press enter. And you should see something like what just happened happen. I'll hit enter again to stop discovery. And then I'm going to go unplug the quad real quick. I'll be right back. Now, you should see, you see all these sensors that came in? These sensors are coming from my flight controller. You know, ACCX, ACCY, ACC, all of those. Even if you don't have a flight controller connected, though, you should see this RSSI sensor and maybe the RXBT sensor and maybe like an A4 or A2 sensor. The key thing, though, is if you don't see this RSSI sensor, what, what we're about to describe will not work for you. You need to see this RSSI sensor here in the telemetry screen in order to proceed. Then I'm going to go to the input screen and I'm going to pick any empty input line. So you can see the first four lines are aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder, my main controls, and then five, six, seven. I've just picked line seven for just any empty line. And I'm going to press enter to create a new input on that line. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to name it just for convenience. I'm going to name it RSI. Uh, typically, we use three-letter names, uh, although you can use four-letter, I think. Uh, when you're entering letters like this, holding down the enter key will create a capital letter. Pressing enter short, short pressing it will create, will input a lowercase letter. There's a little tip that some people may not know. So I've named it RSI. I'll hit exit to back out. And then I'll go down to the source. I'll press enter. And actually what I want to do is I want to long press enter and that will bring up this menu. And in this menu, I'll go down to the telemetry section, press enter. And then I'm just going to scroll up until I get to the RSSI sen uh, sensor. You don't want RSSI plus or minus. You just want RSSI. Finally, raise the scale from 0 dB to 100 dB. Uh, I see here I've mistakenly left it at 101 dB. That is a mistake. Don't do that. You want 100 dB. Now we're going to go to the mixer screen and choose which aux channel to put this on. Now I'm using channel 8 which is aux 4. The aux channels start with channel 5, that's aux 1, 6, 7, 8, and so on. I'm using channel 8 here. You can use any empty one. I'm going to press enter one time to create the new mix. And for the source, I actually want a long press. Nope, that was a short press, Joshua. Long press, to, and I'm going to choose inputs from the menu. And then I'm going to go up and find the RSI input, RSSI input that I created. Then there's one more thing you need to do. Uh, you need to set a weight of 200 and an offset of negative 100. And you know what? For once, I'm not going to go into the reasons for this. Well, yeah, yeah. anyway, screw it. Just do, it a, just do what you're being told there. It's fine. 
Okay, I can't resist. It's because the RSSI goes from 0 to 100, but we need it to go from negative 100 to positive 100, and that's how you do it. Now, once you've done this, you should see over here that this channel, channel 8's value that I'm pointing to now, contains the RSSI. And in fact, if I go plug in a quadcopter, which I'm just about to do, you should see it start moving and jumping around. You can walk around with your Tyrannus. You can put it into range check mode. There we go. See, I just plugged in, and now the RSSI value is, there it is. It's working. The last thing to do then is hook it up in Betaflight. And in order to do that, let's just... Uh, What's going on? Failed to connect. Give me a break. There we go. The last thing to do then is hook it up in Betaflight. And the way to do that is to go to the receiver tab and choose RSSI channel. And you can see here's AUX4 going up and down. This is our RSSI channel. We just need to tell Betaflight that is our RSSI channel. And we're going to do that by choosing the AUX channel up here in RSSI channel. I'll hit save. And then if I go to the setup tab, I should see RSSI right here, 75%. And what you should see, well, you should see that this corresponds, as this goes up and down, it should also correspond to the RSSI in the Tyrannus going up and down. The part I can't really resolve is that the Tyrannus shows RSSI in dB, and this is showing it as a percent. So you're going to have to kind of figure out at what percent you lose signal, right? You could do some testing, some range testing, and look in your OSD and see what uh, what what percent it drops out at. But this is how you get the RSSA value into your flight controller. Now it's working. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.